Good morning, UAW family. I apologize for being late, but mere moments before our Facebook Live this morning, we received a flurry of interest from the companies in addressing some significant bargaining issues. As you know, this morning we will be announcing the next targets for our stand-up strike as we fight for a historic victory at the Big Three. But first, as always, I want to take a moment to honor our members who are already on strike. Together, we're putting the fight back in the UAW and in the entire labor movement. A union that's not prepared to strike to win is like a fighter with one hand tied behind his back. Without the strike weapon, the war on workers is a rigged fight. For decades, it's been the same story unchecked corporate power, disappearing worker power. The result is massive inequality across our society. To restore the balance of power, we have to restore the strike. That's what every one of our striking members is doing. Our local 2326 strikers at West Rock Packaging in Dayton, New Jersey are standing strong for the affordable health care that every person should have a right to. Our local 644 members at Dometic outside Philadelphia are standing up to a global corporation that makes billions in profits but won't pay every worker a living wage. Our strikers at Thombert in Newton, Iowa at local 997 are fighting for work-life balance that every worker deserves. Here in Michigan, our members at Blue Cross Blue Shield are striking to CEO pay before patient care. Let's remember that our movement is fighting everywhere, not just in Michigan, but from east to west and from north to south. Our members at ZF in Tuscaloosa, Alabama, make axles for Mercedes when they're on the job. Today, they're on strike. Mercedes, the same lesson we're teaching the big three. Not a single wheel will turn without us. And that's what's happening across the vehicle supply chain. Members of UAW Local 259 at an Infinity dealership in Long Island, New York, faced down the boss and won a new agreement. They called a strike in the morning, and by the afternoon, management caved. Now they have a new agreement with serious gains and no concessions. Our members at Mack Truck may also be hitting the picket lines when their agreement expires at midnight on Sunday. Sadly, Mack Truck is following the same tired playbook as so many of our other employers. They're dragged to the very last minute. The company took three weeks to respond to our economic demands, and then they put a long list of concessions on the table. Our members at MAC voted by 98% to authorize a strike. So unless the company gets serious, they're about to learn firsthand that our union's back in a fight and we're not backing down to anybody. And just down the road from Solidarity House, UAW members at Detroit's MGM Grand Detroit, Motor City Casino, and Hollywood at Greektown are taking a strike authorization vote as we speak. They're part of the Detroit Casino Council, a group of five unions working together for a fair contract. Following COVID, shutdowns and with throughout Detroit casino workers that faced all kinds of sacrifices. They sacrificed raises. They shouldered heavier workloads so the industry could recover. And now workers are struggling to make ends meet even as the industry generates all-time record-high gaming revenues. As you know, we have over 18,000 Big Three members on strike at 41 facilities in 21 states. That includes striking at parts distribution centers and CCAs at still Massachusetts. These facilities represent a key revenue stream for the Big Three and for years have represented a lower paid tier of workers. And I want to take a moment to acknowledge something very disturbing we've seen on a few picket lines at parts depots. 
We've heard of multiple instances from California to Michigan to Massachusetts of violence against our picketers from people crossing our picket line. We've had guns pulled on us, trucks and cars rammed through us, and violent threats hurled at us. And I want to be absolutely clear, we will not be intimidated into backing down by the companies or their scabs. Our cause is just, striking for a better future to protect our communities and to defeat corporate greed is not just our right, it's our duty. And shame on anyone that would engage in this violence against our members. To the public, we invite you to stand with us on the picket line if you support our cause. As you know in our union, we wear red on Wednesdays. This is a tradition begun by our union family in the CWA to honor a striking member who was killed on the picket line in 1989. In our own union, during our 2019 strike at General Motors, one of our union brothers was killed on the picket line. Company and scab violence is not new. Our union's been fighting it for nearly a century. We didn't back down then, and we won't back down now. And we know America has our back. This week, we were joined on the picket line by none other than the President of the United States. It was a historic day. We picketed at GM's Willow Run facility where UAW members B-20 bombers during World War II. Our union was essential in building what was called the arsenal of democracy. Just like 80 years ago, today, our union is building a different arsenal of democracy. But this war isn't against some foreign country. The front lines are right here at home. It's the war of the working class versus corporate greed. We are the new arsenal of democracy. The workers are the liberators, and our strike is the vehicle for liberation. I want to be clear about one thing about the president's historic visit. The most powerful man in the world showed up for one reason only, because our solidarity is the most powerful force in the world. When we stand together united in the cause of economic and social justice, there's nothing we can't do. With that said, let's talk about bargaining at the big three. UAW family, I'm going to be very direct with you. Over the last week, the vice presidents and your national negotiators in my office have been working night and day to bargain a record contract that reflects the record profits we have produced for the big three. Sadly, Despite our willingness to bargain, Ford and GM have refused to make meaningful progress at the table. That's why at noon Eastern time today, we will expand our strike to these two companies. To be clear, negotiations haven't broke down. We're still talking with all three companies. And I'm still very hopeful that we can reach a deal that reflects the incredible sacrifices and contributions our members have made over the last decade. But I also know that what we win at the bargaining table depends on it's time to use that power. That's why I'm calling on an additional 7,000 members across Ford and GM to go on strike starting at noon Eastern today. I'm calling on Ford's Chicago assembly plant to stand up and go on strike. And I'm calling on GM's Lansing Delta Township to stand up and go out on strike. And let me be clear, and this is important, Lansing Regional Stamping will continue working. Our courageous members at these two plants are the next wave of reinforcements in our fight for record contracts. We are not calling on any additional members at Stellantis to go on strike. Moments before this broadcast, Stellantis made significant progress on the 2009 cost of living allowance, the right not to cross a picket line, as well as the right to strike over product commitments and plant closures and outsourcing moratoriums. We have this momentum at Stellantis and hope it continues. Until then, we will keep building 
our arsenal of democracy, and we will win. Our strategy is working. As the President of the United States recently put it, UAW members saved the automobile industry back in 2008 when we made a lot of sacrifices. We gave up a lot, and the companies were in trouble. But now they're doing incredibly well, and guess what? We should be doing incredibly well, too. Over the last 10 years, the big three have made a quarter of a trillion dollars in North American profits. Over the last six months, the big three have made a record $21 billion in North American profits. We knew going into this, the fight, into this fight, that the road ahead was going to be difficult, and we knew that it was unlikely this would be quick. To quote the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr., the arc of moral universe is long, but it bends toward justice. UAW family, you are the force that bends that arc. Our anger is righteous and our struggle is just. We are fed up with corporate greed and we are fed up with corporate excess. We are fed up with breaking our bodies for companies that take more and more and give less and less. As of noon Eastern time today, 25,000 of us will be on strike for a better future. To all our community and political allies, we invite you to join our picket lines. To our UAW families still working on the job, keep monitoring for the status quo violations and keep refusing voluntary overtime. And keep showing the companies that you're ready to stand up when you're called. When we win this fight, when we right the wrongs of the past 15 years and longer, and when we set a new course for future generations, it won't be because of any president, not the UAW president, not the president of the United States. It will be because ordinary people did extraordinary things. Our solidarity is our strength. And right now, our strength is the hope of working class people everywhere. Let's stand up and win this thing for ourselves, for our families, for our communities, for our country, and for our future. Thank you.